It's Madden NFL 23, and it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Denver Broncos and the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it comes your way next. Smack dab in the middle of I-295 that encircles the city of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. There's a good look at TIAA Bank Field. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Denver Broncos and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And off we go from Jacksonville. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And they'll be led out by the first overall pick from a couple of drafts ago, former Clemson Tiger Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, it can take off and run when under duress. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play, second down. It's probably a pretty good sign here on the opening drive if your guys from the secondary are coming up and spilling things in the backfield. How about the adrenaline and aggressiveness that led his eyes to the backfield to run up there and make that tackle, setting a tone early for his defense. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's Lawrence to throw. And Jones has it over the middle. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, is going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there that brings up fourth. And we're going to see this offense try and spread the field a little bit and utilize the outside third of the field, especially against man coverage. But that time, the defense was up to the task, forcing the incompletion. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. 
Call that a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They're let out by the former third-round pick now in his 11th NFL season, and that's Russell Wilson. And I think that even after a decade in the NFL, he doesn't get enough credit for not just his consistency, but his brilliant play and leadership as well. He's won a Super Bowl in Seattle. He's led his team to another Super Bowl opportunity also in Seattle. His numbers are always terrific, almost always in the Pro Bowl, and all his team does is win. This guy's a natural leader. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at the 33-yard line. They begin the drive with Williams. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That good for 22 at a first down. This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ends up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for a defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. On first and ten, it's Wilson. He'll go out to the flat for Edmonds. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher, and that's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. A first carry for the Fordham Ram, Chase Edmonds. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Now Wilson. Eluding the... And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Now that's a heck of a moment for your first sack of the game because if this long drive ends without a touchdown because of that sack... We're going to look back and say that might be one of the biggest plays of this contest. It's third and long now for Wilson and the Broncos after that sack. Back to throw. Wilson. He'll get this to his running back, Edmonds. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Fourth down, Corliss Waitman now on to punt. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. 
The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Now Lawrence down around his goal line. Open man right side is Ingram. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be second down. Now Lawrence. His throw incomplete. Barton and I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up in man coverage. And on that play, they held up quite well. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. And Lawrence will throw. And they'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so and whether it's the script whether it's you know just what they're going through whether they're seeing different defenses they're gonna have to figure it out as this game moves on 47 yards on the punt that time just one yard on the return so now the second drive offensively coming up for the denver broncos over on the sideline hoping to hit that reset button between possessions last time out they had to punt it away this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 40. Now it's Wilson. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, that was his first target of the game, and it's going to take at least one more target to get him on the board. Took a nice substantial hit to jar that catch loose from him. Incomplete pass. So second down and 10, once again, they'll go from the 40. To throw is Wilson. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Well, hang on now, we're gonna pause here. We've got an injured player. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Throwing is Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory. Lawrence. 
Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 13. Now Lawrence to throw. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. This is what defensive coaches ask of their defenders every single ball game. Get a hand on every throw in coverage. They want the deflections. They want the knockaways. Pick it yourself if you can, but at least knock it down and guarantee it's incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From the shotgun, Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. Now Lawrence. Man, that's going to be incomplete. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And a throw there going to be incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. It's showtime, baby. Let's go, man. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Wilson to throw. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. So eight yards on the completion there, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. Now he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Fourth down now after a loss of two. Well, so much for that possession. Yeah, I think he tried to do a little too much there, partner. He tried to keep it himself. End up getting buried in the backfield. And that brings up fourth down. Now we get to see the punter, Corliss Waitman. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. 
They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late, and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. On second down, a run with ETN five yards now it's third and five that second down play call was not to pick up the first down it was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down so they were behind the sticks so to speak they need to make up some ground and they did Lawrence screenplay here's ETN and he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Straight ahead, ETN. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. The last run got six, now second and four. ETN once more. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Consecutive runs of six yards gives him a first and 10. But, partner, if the defense isn't going to adjust and they keep giving them those five, six, seven-yard runs over and over, they're likely to run it the whole way to the end zone. They'll be more than happy to take the yardage available and save some of their other plays in the playbook for another time. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. A handoff running left is ETN. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. The corner, Ronald Darby, comes up to get him. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. So not a lineman, but the tight end instead this time, drawing the holding call. And more and more what you're getting with tight ends are guys who are much more receiver than blocker. They may be willing, but that might not be their thing. Oftentimes, they'll be the ones getting the penalties. Lawrence. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Zay Jones. A 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars will jump on top of the game's first score here this afternoon. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, 
They have refined route running ability. Michael Badgley on for the extra point. And this is up and good. The score now 7 0 Jaguars. So that drive in total eight plays. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Denver's offense now set to go. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, Three punts isn't a bad thing, but when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their own 23. He'll start things out by handing to Edmonds, and he'll be brought down here at the 28. Chad Muma brings him down on that one defensively. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now Wilson. And he wisely will throw that one away. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Wilson. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Williams. And this will not be enough. On third and five, he only gets three. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. Here's Corliss Waitman now. Shifts by him. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a bead on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football as they've got it with a first and 10. Running out of the gun with ETN, and he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. On 
second down, ETN once more. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Here's Lawrence to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Well, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. They run it again with Williams. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 67 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll run on first down, Edmonds. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now a give up the middle to Williams. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Here 
Here's Wilson. And that will be incomplete. Coverage is awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Fourth down, Wilson trots off, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Denver field goal. The kick by McManus is good, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them, but I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. A give to ETN running right. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Baron Browning, the one who brought him down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. On second down, Etienne once more. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and four. Another toad for Etienne. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 47. Looking to throw Lawrence. No, oh, bottled up, fumble. It's out, it's loose. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. The fumble on first down now, here's second down. ETN up the middle. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line.
And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Looking to throw. Lawrence. That's caught. It's Dan Arnold, the tight end. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 27-yard line. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. A nice chunk play from the tight end position, and it illustrates the cohesiveness that he and his quarterback have. Both saw the extra defender doubling him up, and they still combined for the completion and big gain. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Oh, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. Second and 10 now from the 27. They go play action with Lawrence. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 18 yards that time to push him up first and goal. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. And they'll run with ETN. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. One more time with ETN. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because, remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. you got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. He will push his way down to about the 14. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. to throw Lawrence to the end zone but it's incomplete they converted twice on third down that drive already but couldn't make it a third we always talk about in-game adjustments how about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try from the right hash this a 31 yard attempt Badgley's kick is good, and they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13 play. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself in the range. That way if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This take it in at the goal line. Denver Broncos back out there. Former Tar Heel Javante Williams. We shine the spotlight on him. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space. 
and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the shotgun, Wilson. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Got a man. It's Judy complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, and he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a run straight ahead with Edmonds. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. They stay on the ground. This time it's Williams. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Denver has a first down on the 15-yard play. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Now Wilson on first down. He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. From the 38, Wilson over the middle complete. It's Sutton. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. First down, Wilson. Open man, and again it's Sutton. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A first and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw there, complete to Hamler. 
Now another timeout called for by the offense as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Again, Wilson. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half. But the coverage has been tight all game long. And they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. He's got a man, it's Sutton that's complete. And they'll get this down to the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now for the first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now it's Wilson. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. I'm not liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Wilson. And Sutton hauls it in over the middle. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. This has been a long drive. You gotta figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Wilson. And this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown Broncos. A great effort there. As the first half is winding down. And the Broncos are able to come into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. So the late touchdown there, and that certainly changes things as we move toward halftime. Yeah, and there's a potential for things to change even more because remember, they get the ball first to start the third quarter. So they could potentially double up here and take the lead. A great opportunity for them. Extra point from McManus is good. And the lead down to three at 13-10. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they may just be content to take this three-point lead and head into the locker room. And some room to run now. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. 
final play of the half. It's Lawrence. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So we hit the halftime break here in Jacksonville with the Jags on top. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First order of business, though. Let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Denver. And they weren't able to get a whole lot done throwing the football. That'll likely be a big key if they want to turn things around in the second half. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. It'll be the Broncos getting the football first in this second half as they trail, and we are back underway. Taking it about the one. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. Well, out of the locker rooms, here they come. Their first drive of the third quarter, and Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. but we got a tight one set up to be a very entertaining second half. And as we know, partner, in the NFL, there's trailing and there's trailing, right? Sometimes you're discouraged by how much you're down, but in this case, this is a tight ball game, so there's a sense of optimism here. I think they went in at the half and looked at their play sheet and said, these are the plays we really like. What do you say we use them to start the second half and get us going? Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Partner, for once in my life, I'll be succinct. In a one-possession game, every single stop like that could be a difference maker. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. To throw is Wilson. He'll get that complete to Albert O. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game. And they hit that one there for big yardage. Just like that, out of danger and up past the 40 now for first and 10. Now it's Wilson. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Sutton. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Second and five. Edmonds running out of the shotgun. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. From the gun, it's Wilson. And that is incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football, and now zapped right back in the other direction. 
And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems he? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A give, running right, ETN. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Four yards the pick up, first down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. On first down, right back to ETN. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 84 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. Just a terrific run there, Charles, from a running back who is so compact and powerful, and that strength was on display there. And that, in a nutshell, shows you what this guy is made of. I mean, most guys in the NFL just can't do that. He absorbed the contact, refocused himself, and made a break for the end zone. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Play action. It's Lawrence. And the pass complete to Ingram on the crossing route. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A well-executed 22-yard game. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We should wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory, right at the 40. Now Lawrence. Now a quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time, separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and ten. A snap to Lawrence as he taps this forward. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. And a lot of times, these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here, they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. Well, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard.
So after the fourth down conversion, now first and 10 inside the 25. Straight ahead, ETN. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. That's a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second and nine, Lawrence complete to Jones. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. They'll run with ETN. But he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. 92 yards for him on the ground now on 18 carries. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lava's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. On first and 10, it's ETN. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Second and goal from inside the five. ETN. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Brandon, now we find out what their definition of commitment is. They've run it on the first two plays. Do they come back and do it again? They're that much closer to getting into the end zone. Yeah, inching closer and really knocking on the door now. They'll try to run with ETN. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. Here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Badgley able to knock this one through, and that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So it was a three-point lead at halftime, and they double that with a field goal here. And I think defensively, you've got to be okay with that because you kept this game within a touchdown. Your hope is that you've inspired your offense to put a drive together, get in the end zone themselves, and hopefully get you the lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. And Denver getting set to take the field. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their own 14-yard line. Wilson. Got a man open. It's Sutton. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down.
Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Wilson now to throw on third down. That's complete. It's Okuwebunam. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Throwing is Wilson. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. On second down, this is Edmonds. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Call that a loss of a yard and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. They yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. This will be very aggressive. It's like being a, a sprinter in a 100-meter dash, exploding out of the blocks, trying to push the ball downfield. Guaranteed this defense better be on their toes. They're going to be tested all game. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And the lead is back down to three here at 16-13. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. And I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gain something out of that drive. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. The Jaguars getting set to go. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And he'll be brought down around the seven yard line. 
So turnovers, Charles, you figure will be key in the second half, and that's a big giveaway there. Yeah, and as you and I both know, coaches are always preaching ball security, and none more often than right here in the second half of a tight football game. Now you've got to believe what the coaches are saying and take care of that football. The defense gets him the ball via the turnover. Now can this offense cash in? First and goal. Following the fumble recovery, it's Wilson. On the screen, this is Edmonds. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. Well, that wasn't exactly a work of art, was it? No, that wasn't a thing of beauty. That's just why I don't play in points per reception fantasy league. Is that, is that what they call the receiver still hard? gets a point there. Yeah. No. And you went that far back. No bueno. Well, I'll tell you what. I wish I had their defense on, uh, on my fantasy game. It's second and goal, but now all the way back at the 14. There's Wilson to throw. And the pass is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Jerry Judy. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Broncos have taken the lead here in this third quarter. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open in the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback-receiver combos in the NFL they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play and they got it done there McManus's point after is good and that will make this a four-point game To the touchdown here's McManus now to kick it away and no return here for Agnew so they'll bring it out start the drive at the 25 out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over Charles you got to think the number one goal here is ball security remember last drive they coughed it up then they allowed the touchdown and now they're trailing on the scoreboard Boy, the way you described it makes me think that that one actually hurt them three times. The fumble cost them potential points. Then they watched their opponent get a touchdown off of the fumble. And third, they lost the lead as a result. Really tough sequence right there. I don't think coaches have to remind them to hold on to the football. They've just got to find a way to get it done. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw here taken in by Ingram. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A very solid gain of 27. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 48-yard line. From the shotgun, Lawrence. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Christian Kirk, 48 yards. And the Jaguars have answered back with a third quarter touchdown of their own to retake the lead. We see this route all the time, but when it's well executed, it's a beauty. And it feels like the fade takes forever to develop, like that ball is just hanging in the air. And the reason why is that the receiver is trying his best to work the defender inside and give himself space to fade away from him and catch the football, and that's exactly what happened there. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. <laughs> After 
after the touchdown. Cook now to kick this one away. Well, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. On first down, Wilson. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Wilson's throw there, complete to Hamler. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Wilson. He'll get this one to Patrick. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Throwing again here, Wilson. And a quick throw here that's complete. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. Now a handoff, here's Williams. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. That was an example of excellent defense there. They stuffed them. So now he brings up a third down situation. If I'm calling plays here, I make sure I put in the hands of my quarterback and get it to a receiver real fast. I'm not running the ball here. Now a tenth carry. Here's Williams. And he's going to have a Broncos first down as good running gets him to about the 44. Brandon, this can be so demoralizing for a defense. They've had two opportunities to get off the field. They haven't gotten it done. So now your coordinator, he's going to call every blitz that he has, any type of exotic, something that they haven't seen before. And he's also telling the defensive linemen, don't worry about holding people up. Just get in gaps and try and make a big play. And not only not getting off the field on two opportunities, clock continuing to run. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now it's Wilson. 
It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? To throw is Wilson. And he'll just get rid of it. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. So here now is Brandon McManus in a big spot. This will be from 56 yards out. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. We've seen some big kicks in the NFL the last few years, and that one might just rank right up there. And you know you can hear the crowd react, right? But I was focused in on the sideline and watched them absolutely erupt. I don't know how many of them thought that he was actually going to make that kick, but how about how they felt when the ball went over the post? Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Fields it right around the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 15. Looking to throw Lawrence. They'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practice now. It's not necessarily, oh, we just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Running out of the gun with ETN. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. It's Kareem Jackson making the play defensively. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. On second and nine, Lawrence over the middle. He's got his tight end, Ingram. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. A handoff for ETN. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Nice run defense presented there. And what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes. No one over pursuing and making a very nice play. On oh, 
on second and nine. Lawrence, he'll complete this to Ingram, his tight end. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 43. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So the 14 yards actually takes him from 143 to the other for first and 10. Now Lawrence to throw. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now it's second and nine. Here's Lawrence. And his pass incomplete. He was looking for Evan Ingram, the tight end. Third down here. And to throw again is Lawrence. The left side completion to Jones. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 25-yard line. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. They'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Steps away to his left. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. A give to ETN running right. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. 109 yards rushing now for the ball game on 24 carries. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch victory. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. And they'll go again with ETN. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Lawrence going to keep this himself. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. The last two plays each lose a yard. They'll try to move forward here on third and 12. 
Now Lawrence. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to break our fourth quarter tie. Badgley able to punch this one through, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it, and he'll take it out to the 25. Denver's offense now set to go. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their 25-yard line. Wilson over the middle, complete to Judy. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. Throwing again on second down. Wilson, the quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. The heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. Wilson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Locker skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. The Broncos send out their punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Oh, what a move. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. 
This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. They'll try the left side with ETM. And a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down, stay in bounds, keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. Oh, and that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they look to try and finish this one off. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. And now right out of the two-minute break, We'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Another toe for ETN. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Let's focus in on what we got to do here. Hey, let's go. Get something together. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. ETN up the middle. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. A shotgun snap and again to ETN. And he'll get this down only to the 18. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter. Do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter, Maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. Badgley's kick is good, and that will double their lead as it's up to six. So it's another field goal here. He may need to ice his leg after this, and that's now five field goals converted in this game alone. Well, get the trainer. They're going to need this guy, and they've needed every single one of the field goals he's made, too. If they're going to get out of here with a win, I say he gets a game ball. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. So here is Wilson and the Broncos. Down by six. A little over 50 seconds remaining. 
They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and ten. Now Wilson. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, I think we were both wondering if we were going to see them try and push it deep downfield, facing a one possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Wilson. He'll swing that out to Edmonds. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Throwing now is Wilson. Finding Sutton. And he takes us up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. A couple of veterans, Wilson to Sutton there for the Bronco first. Brandon's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. First down now, but that clock rolling. Wilson to throw. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. A couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You have to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. A fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort. That was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall.